Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB BOSS flashback on this board here. This is the ASRock B580M-X Wi-Fi, and this is a pretty easy thing to do with a USB stick. And I will say, for those of you that are coming to this video because your system possibly isn't working, there's a strong chance that you don't actually need to update the BOSS in this particular method. Uh, you can do it from within the BOSS itself, so if you're watching this and thinking, I have to do it from the USB flashback method, you don't. You can actually download the BOSS and just do it through the BOSS itself if your system is able to post. So I wanted to say that straight away. This isn't the only way of updating your BIOS. You can also do it through the ASRock Center as well, should you wish to. That potentially could be more risky because you're relying on the Windows ecosystem, but anyway, I digress. So there are three ways of doing this. You can do it from the USB flashback with a bare bone system. You can do it with a fully operational system via the BIOS, or you can do it from a fully operational system via Windows using the ASRock Center. Now there are gonna be some things you're gonna to need to do this. So you will need the motherboard itself, something to place it on. You can use the box, that's absolutely fine. You'll also need a power supply, ATX power supply for your system or SFX. You'll also need the 24 pin main power connector to plug to your board. That's the only connection you need to perform the standalone USB flashback. You'll also need, obviously, power lead to power up your power supply. And also, you'll need a USB drive. Now, the USB drive needs to be 32 gigabytes or less. That way, you can actually format it to the FAT32 file system. Also, the drive needs to be MBR rather than GPT. We've done separate videos on how to convert larger drives into a smaller FAT32 partition. And also, we've done a standalone video to how to convert a drive from being GPT to being MBR. So if you haven't seen those already, potentially those might be worth checking out. They will be linked in the video description. Also, something else I will point out, uh, depending when you're purchasing this motherboard and also what processor you're trying to run on it, at the time of filming this video, which is towards the end of January 2025, this board actually ships with BOSS version 3.15. Now yours may be different, so do check. It's very easy to do that. Just look on the motherboard itself, look at the BOSS chip, and there'll be a little sticker on there saying the BOSS vision. So this one is 3.15, which is actually the second release on this particular system. There is a newer version, 3.18, which is the one we're gonna be flashing. All that does is add some stability fixes and also some uh, extra features for RAM support, all that kind of stuff. So it isn't absolutely necessary at this particular time. At the time of recording the video, like I said, January 2025, towards the end here, version 3.15 supports every single AM5 processor on the market at present. Now, obviously, depending when you're watching this, that may differ. So yeah, you may need to update your BOSS to support newer processors. But yeah, anyway, I'm digressing. So I think the best thing to do now is if we head over to the computer and I'll show you how to download the BOSS how to extract the file, and also how to rename it so that it's compatible with the BIOS update system on this board. Okay, so to get the uh, the BIOS for this particular motherboard, head over to the website. I'll try and link this in the video description. Uh, it's pretty easy to find, just type in B850M-X Wi-Fi. Obviously, if you've got the non-Wi-Fi version, there is a non-Wi-Fi version available as well. So just go to the alternate site. So with all that said, scroll down a little bit more, go down to where it says support here, and then it comes up with these options here. So we want the BIOS. And you can see, like I said, the version we've got 3.15, which was available last year. The initial BIOS release was 3.11. And this new version is updating it to the Agisa Combo AM5 Pi 2103A Patch A. So this is the one we want. This is a beta at the moment, but the chances are by the time you watch this, this will be a full fledged release. So in order to download it, head over to this section here, click on global, and then choose a location to download it to. I'm gonna download it to our Windows desktop. Just click on save. That'll be done very quickly indeed, so we can now minimize or close this window. And now we can look at our file we've downloaded. So we need to extract this because this is a compressed file. So right click and choose extract all. And it'll ask you where you wanna send it to. So we're gonna just send it to this location, click on extract and it will give you our file here. Now, if you can't see the .rom on the end, go up to View, and then Show, and then choose File Name Extensions, and also Show Hidden Items as well. Chances are that's done already, but choose File Name Extensions. You need to be able to see those to enable to rename it correctly. And to rename it, just click on it once or twice, just so it's highlighted, then just delete everything which is there. And we want to call this Creative, 
dot rom. So now we've got this file ready. Now we can prepare our USB drive. So I've plugged in our USB drive and I've used this for a previous BOSS flash. So I'm going to format this drive. So find your USB drive, right click and choose format. And the options here, FAT32, make sure it says FAT32, not XFAT or anything else. Default allocation size, leave the volume label empty and quick format. This will erase everything on the drive. So make sure that if there's anything on there you actually need that you uh, save it first. When you're happy, click on start. It will tell you that it's going to erase all the information. When you're okay, click okay. If not, click cancel and it will come up with format complete. So now our drive is blank. So now what we can do is go back to our desktop, which we've got here. So desktop and get our file which is here, the creative.rom, and we're going to right click, going to choose cut, and then we're going to go down to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. However you copy and paste, whether you use control buttons or whatever, it's entirely up to you. Choice remains the same, so make sure your USB drive has the creative.rom file on it, and the file size should be uh, 32 megabytes or 32,000 kilobytes, and that's absolutely fine. So now we can close this window down, take the USB drive out of the computer, and then we can head over to our little test bench setup. Okay, so now we're ready to flash the boss. So let's grab our motherboard and we can put it onto the motherboard box. That's going to be absolutely fine for flashing the boss just to give it some sort of anti-static protection. If you want to, you can wear an anti-static wristband. The choice is entirely up to you. Um, I never have in all the years I've done this and I've never experienced any problems, at least not that I know of. So that's entirely down to you. Now, if you're wondering which ports you actually need to use, so if we look at the motherboard itself, on the back there, you've got our little button. That's our boss flashback button. And if you're not too sure which port you need to plug the USB stick into, it is the one directly next to the USB flashback button. If you're, again, not entirely sure, if you take a look at the rear I.O. shield, you can see on there, it does have it highlighted. It's kind of like a, a white outline around it saying boss flashback and also USB flashback is the next port across. So. Yeah, hopefully that makes life easier. If you've got it built already into a case, then you'll see those easily enough. If not, obviously, yeah, you can just do it. However, so let's put our USB stick into that bottom port there, which is next to our USB flashback button. That's all ready to go. So we need to get some power to the motherboard. So we've got our power supply, that's plugged into the wall already. Power supply is currently switched off. We're gonna grab our main 24 pin power connector and plug it into the connector onto the motherboard. Make sure it's firmly seated all the way in. Now, you know, sometimes they don't always go all the way in, so make sure it does and make sure the little clasp on the side clicks into place. And that is kind of it. We are sort of ready. So what we need to do now, turn on the power supply. So let's do that first of all. So power supply is now turned on. So what we want to do now is to press and hold the USB BOSS flashback button in for about three seconds. When we do that, we should see the BOSS LED on the side illuminate and it will flash a couple of times and start the process. So let's go ahead and do that now. One, two, three. And now hopefully you can see that the green light is flashing. So it should flash a few times, then change speeds. If you press it and it flashes a couple of times, then goes to solid green, that means that something is wrong which generally means either it cannot read the USB stick or potentially you've got the wrong file or you've renamed the file incorrectly. If everything's working as it should do, you will see the BOSS flashback LED continue to go. You may also see that your actual power supply fan may start spinning depending on the type of power supply you've got. Some will, some won't. This one currently at the time isn't. So just be patient. This should take somewhere between sort of five to seven minutes to complete the process. So I'm gonna give you a close up of what the flashing LED looks like and basically we're just waiting for it to stop flashing. So the flashing speed has now changed slightly, which is something we definitely wanna be looking for. If for some reason when you're doing this, your flashing speed from the start just stays the same and it keeps on flashing for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so, it basically means it isn't working. So you can, you've possibly done something wrong, try a different USB drive, make sure it's formatted to the MBR format rather than GPT. Also double or triple check you've actually got the right BOSS file for your particular board and also that it is renamed appropriately. And there we go, we've got some fast flashing towards the end of the process there. That is something to also be looking out for. 
This, I believe, is now actually sending the BIOS from the BIOS flashback utility to the BIOS chip itself. So don't interrupt the process. Let it carry on, do its thing. Okay, now the BAS LED has gone out. So that would appear that it has finished. The power supply also has clicked off as well. So that is it. We're happy now that the BAS has been flashed successfully and now we can continue to build up the rest of our system. Or if you've already got your system built already, you can now boot it back up and see if it recognizes your CPU. So there we go, we're happy now that our BOSS has been successfully flashed. So at this point, now you can turn off your power supply and also remove the USB stick from the motherboard. Also unplug the power if you wish to, obviously depending on what state your system's in, if it's fully built into a case, then yeah, just carry on, use your PC. Otherwise, if you want to, you can put your CPU now on uh, and just make sure that you get a output or a power on self-test or post as it's otherwise known. And yeah, that is uh, pretty much it, I think. Pretty straightforward process to do, as long as you get everything right. One of the biggest concerns is the fact that potentially sometimes USB drives may not be recognized or they're the wrong size, etc., or potentially you've got the wrong file. Those are the most common things which prevent a motherboard from flashing. Other than that, yeah, pretty much straightforward thing to do. If you've got any problems and you've watched this and you're still a little bit stuck, feel free to head over to our Discord and uh, jump into the BOSS tech support room and we'll do our best to try and help you out uh, should you still be experiencing problems. I think that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content of like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also the chime notification. That will be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.